This is lesson 139 of A Course in Miracles, the workbook. I will accept atonement for myself. I will accept atonement for myself. <clears throat> I got to keep remembering to, to look over here. <laughs> Not directly at the camera, but over here. Um, so um, we're going to read through it, 12 paragraphs, and then we're going to talk about each paragraph. And you can, you, you'll see why this goes hand in hand with yesterday's lesson, Heaven is the Decision I Must Make. And we did get into the subject of atonement. The atonement principle is really the, the, the fundamental principle of the whole course. Right? The, the, the atonement principle is that we are still at home in God, dreaming of exile. Right, The separation never happened. We are not se separate from each other or from God. We're, we are one. Um, we are one spirit and that's, that's essentially the atonement principle and the, 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 the world of perception is, is, is an illusion. It's a vast illusion. Um, and it, it, it seems very real, but it is not. So if, if you understand that and you, and you, um, know and recognize the truth uh, through experience, you, you realize that that is true and uh, it changes everything, right? It changes your understanding of reality. Um, <clears throat> all right, so here we go. I will accept atonement for myself, lesson 139. Here's the end of choice. For here we come to a decision to accept ourselves as God created us. And what is choice except uncertainty of what we are? There is no doubt that is not rooted here. There is no question but reflects this one. There is no conflict that does not entail the single, simple question, what am I? Paragraph 2. Yet who could ask this question except one who has refused to recognize himself? Only refusal to accept yourself could make the question seem to be sincere. The only thing that can be surely known by any living thing is what it is. From this one point of certainty, it looks on other things as certain as itself. Paragraph three. Uncertainty about what you must be is self-deception on a scale so vast, its magnitude can hardly be conceived. To be alive and not to know yourself is to believe that you are really dead. For what is life except to be yourself and what but you can be alive instead? Who is the doubter? What is it he doubts? Whom does he question? Who can answer him? Paragraph four. He merely states that he is not himself and therefore being something else becomes a questioner of what that something is. Yet he could never be alive at all unless he knew the answer. If he asks as if he does not know, it merely shows he does not want to be the thing he is. He has accepted it because he lives has judged against it and denied its worth, and has decided that he does not know the only certainty by which he lives. Paragraph 5. Thus he becomes uncertain of his life, for what it is has been denied by him. It is for this denial that you need atonement. Your denial made no change in what you are, but you have split your mind into what knows and does not know the truth. You are yourself. There is no doubt of this, and yet you doubt it. But you do not ask what part of you can really doubt yourself. It cannot really be a part of you that asks this question, for it asks of one who knows the answer. Were it part of you, then certainty would be impossible. Paragraph 6. Atonement remedies the strange idea that it is possible to doubt yourself and be unsure of what you really are. This is the depth of madness, yet it is the universal question of the world. What does this mean except the world is mad? Why share its madness in the sad belief that what is universal here is true? Paragraph 7. Nothing the world believes is true. It is a place whose purpose is to be a home where those who claim they do not know themselves can come to question what it is they are. And they will come again until the, the time atonement is accepted and they learn it is impossible to doubt yourself and not to be aware of what you are. Paragraph 8. Only acceptance can be asked of you, for what you are is certain. It is set forever in the holy mind of God and in your own. 
It is so far beyond all doubt and question that to ask what it must be is all the proof you need to show that you believe the contradiction that you know not what you cannot fail to know. Is this a question or a statement which denies itself in statement? Let us not allow our holy minds to occupy themselves with senseless musings such as this. Paragraph 9. We have a mission here. We do not come to reinforce the madness that we once believed in. Let us not forget the, forget the goal that we accepted. It is more than just our happiness alone we came to gain. What we accept as what we are proclaims what everyone must be along with us. Fail not your brothers, or you fail yourself. Look lovingly on them, that they may know that they are part of you and you of them. Paragraph 10. This does atonement teach and demonstrates the oneness of God's Son, is unassailed by his belief he knows not what he is. Today, accept atonement. Not to change reality, but merely to accept the truth about yourself and go your way rejoicing in the endless love of God. It is but this that we are asked to do. It is but this that we will do today. Paragraph 11. Five minutes in the morning and at night, we will devote to dedicate our minds to our assignment for today. We start with this review of what our mission is. And this is in italics. I will accept atonement for myself, for I remain as God created me. We have not lost the knowledge that God gave to us when he created us like him. We can remember it for everyone, for in creation are all minds as one. And in our memory is the recall how dear our brothers are to us in truth, how much a part of us is every mind, how faithful they have really been to us, and how our Father's love contains them all. Paragraph 12. In thanks for all creation, in the name of its creator and his oneness with all aspects of creation, we repeat our dedication to our cause today each hour as we lay aside all thoughts that would distract us from our holy aim. For several minutes, let your mind be cleared of all the foolish cobwebs which the world would weave around this holy Son of God, and learn the fragile nature of the chains that seem to keep the knowledge of yourself apart from your awareness, as you say, in italics, I will accept atonement for myself, for I remain as God created me. Um, I am still as God created me. That, that, is, that is the atonement principle. Right? I, I have never changed. Right? I, I am still one with God. And that is the only reality, right? The love of God is the only reality. And, and, and I have never left that. I am still um, the loving creation of a loving creator. Uh, and that creation is one. One without a second, right? No, there's no, there's no other. There's no separation. One without a second is from the Upanishads. God, that God is one without a second. Um... So let's go through each paragraph here. <clears throat> this is this is a key lesson. I mean, they're all saying the same thing, really. It's all it all comes down to the atonement principle. But this is, you know, finally Jesus is bringing in just the atonement principle. I will accept atonement for myself. Um, atonement. Let's keep in mind that atonement has different meanings uh, according to different traditions and different time periods of different traditions. Um, atonement used to be a sacrifice, like an animal sacrifice. So you brought an animal to be sacrificed um, in order to atone for your sins. And for the Course, atonement is a different thing. Atonement does not mean um, you, you have to do something to get rid of your sin, because ultimately you, there is no sin, right? Sin, it, sin is illusory. Um, so the atonement principle is the reminder that sin is unreal, right? That sin seems to be real in this world. It appears to be real. It is not real, though. It appears to be very real in this world, right? <laughs> and and it's, hard to, it's hard to let go of our, our, feel, our feeling sinful or feeling um, wrong or even evil, right? So, some, sometimes we, we, get, we get in that rut of, of really feeling horrible about ourself. Um, but bringing an animal sacrifice or, or bringing some kind of atonement, like an external ritual that we might do to atone for our sin, 
uh, is really not the way. And it's not even the way to repent <laughs> or to ask forgiveness or, or to seek forgiveness, right? Even that is, is not really getting at the ultimate, right? With, and the ultimate is, is that um, forgiveness is not even necessary, right? There is no sin. The sin and the feeling of guilt and, and, and all that goes with that is really a product of the ego mind. So it's really about understanding what the ego is and letting go of the ego thought system entirely. And that would be the atonement, right? <laughs> when, when, you, when you accept that you are what you are, that, you, that you've never really changed, right? It's only that, that the clouds of, of shame and guilt and unworthiness and, and sin, feeling sinful, etc., have momentarily, temporarily gotten in the way. But those are just shadows. Those are just clouds. They're, they're very wispy. They're very, you know, they don't have much substance whatsoever. Um, and, and, and what I am has never really changed. My, 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 my true nature. So let's, but let's read, let's read this and we'll get more into it. So paragraph one, here is the end of choice. For here we come to it. And remember the last section was all about choice and that we only have one choice, but we really don't have any choice, right? This, that's what Jesus was getting at. We don't, heaven is a decision I must make, right? That means I don't have any choice in that matter, in reality, because, because I have never changed. <laughs> my, my nature has never changed, right? Um, and I will, willy-nilly, I am going to return to that awareness once again. At some point, right? Time is illusory, so it doesn't even matter when it will be, right? Because, because there is no time. If there is no time, then I am there right now, right? I am, I am still there. I just have temporarily forgotten and I've let the awareness of time get in the way. Time and space has gotten in the way of my, of my recognition of that. So here's the end of choice, for here we come to a decision to accept ourselves as God created us. And what is choice except uncertainty of what we are? There is no doubt that is not rooted here. There is no question but reflects this one. There is no conflict that does not entail the single, simple question, what am I? So every problem really goes back to that one question, what am I? As long as I, as, as long as I don't know what I am, uh, and, and, uh, and that I'm in doubt, um, I will remain in a quandary about everything, right? I, I will be, um, I, I will be lost in the illusion, right? Lost in the, in samsara or, or the suffering. As soon as I accept what I am, um, completely, then I, I will find my way. I will find myself back in in my true reality. Um, paragraph two. Yet who could ask this question? What am I? Is the question, except one who has refused to recognize himself. Only refusal to accept yourself could make the question seem to be sincere. The only thing that can be surely known by any living thing is what it is. From this one point of certainty, it looks on other things as certain as itself. Um, as soon as you ask the question, what am I? Um, you know, as soon as you're, you're, you're in doubt about what, what you are, um, you, you're not going to understand, you know, that's the ego that is asking that question. What am I? Um, it seems to be a sincere question. Um, but you know, if you were in your true self, true reality, that question would not even be asked, right? That question would not make any sense, actually. Um, from the standpoint of, of total oneness, that there are no questions. There are no more, no more doubt, no more questions. Um, paragraph three, uncertainty about what you must be is self-deception on a scale so vast its magnitude can hardly be conceived. To be alive and not know 
know yourself. And not to know yourself is to believe that you are really dead. For what is life except to be yourself? And what but you can be alive instead? Who is the doubter? What is it he doubts? Whom does he question? Who can answer him? These are, these are all amazing questions, actually. <laughs> and, and Jesus is putting down the question here. He's saying, you know, isn't that kind of ridiculous that you would even ask what you are? What, you know, why does that question even arise? And yet, in this world, that is the single most important existential question that we all face, right? What am I? Who am I? Right? And then we have other questions, an ancillary questions like, you know, who put me here? Why am I here? <laughs> How did this all start? You know, what, what, is there a God? What is God? Um, is, there a, is there a higher power, you know, if not God? Is there some higher power? Or is there some, um, you know, are there beings that are running the show here or a being that is running the show? Um, but it all really comes down to that one question is what am I? That, 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 that one question contains everything in it. But Jesus is also saying here, you know, this first sentence, uncertainty about what you must be is self-deception on a scale so vast, its magnitude could hardly be conceived. <clears throat> this is why this is, this is so challenging, right? Because we are deceiving ourselves on such a vast, a, a, such a vast level that we can't even conceive of what that is, right? Um, there was a book that came out about A Course in Miracles, and it was called um, The Ego Conspiracy. <laughs> right? Talk about conspiracies. The, the, the ego conspiracy is the biggest, right? The, the ego conspiracy is everything in this world that we have, that we have made is conspiring to testify or to witness to the reality of it. And that's the ego, right? Every, the ego is, a, is all about um, keeping the, the illusion going, <laughs> right? And, and the way to do that is, for, is to create separation and, and all the separate parts are witnessing to each other that it's real, <laughs> right? And if everyone is... If everyone is agreeing that it's real, that it's that it's true, and that it's really happening, then it, it keeps reinforcing itself. Um, but if you have one authoritative voice, and, and Jesus here is that voice that comes to say, um, uh, "My brother, I have to tell you, <laughs> it's not real. This is not." Um, you know, and this is why you're unhappy. This is why you don't know yourself, right? Because you've taken this all to be real. But on some level, you know that you do not feel at home here, right? Maybe on a very deep, deep level, maybe you've felt that at some point in your life, that, that, that angst, it's called existential angst or angst, right? The German word angst. You have this, you have this deep, profound anxiety about living in this world. Beca and, and on some deep level, you, you know that this world is not your home as it, as it appears to be. All right, going on, paragraph four. He merely states that he is not himself and therefore being something else becomes a questioner of what that something is. Yet he could never be alive at all unless he knew the answer. If he asks as if he does not know, it merely shows he does not want to be, to be the thing he is. He has accepted it because he lives, has judged against it and denied its worth, and has decided that he does not know the only certainty by which he lives. In a sense, I, I think one thing that Jesus is saying here is that asking that question, what am I, is a denial of what we are, right? Even asking that question is is to um, laugh in the face of love, you know, to laugh in the face of, of, of the reality of what we are. 
it's very understandable. The question is very understandable. And, and again, we all ask this question. We all are wondering, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> what am I? Who am I? Right? We all at some point or another have faced this question. We might not, some, some people don't do it maybe very often, but everyone who is, is here on some level, they face this um, dilemma, this question. Some people really, they, you know, they really can't sleep because of this question. Other people that, you know, that doesn't bother them so much, right? They're not, might not be their path, right? But, but everyone has this question, but this question um, is really a denial of what we are. And it, and it, it, it's, it means Jesus is saying that, that you don't want to be what you are, right? You'd rather be something else. That's really what it is. You don't want the answer. You know, to, asking the question is, is also to say, I, I really don't want the answer. Um, as, as long as you have the question, it means you don't want the answer. Because, because if you did want the answer, then you would not even have the question anymore. Um, paragraph 5. Thus he becomes uncertain of his life, for what it is has been denied by him. It is for this denial that you need atonement. Your denial made no change in what you are. Right? You, you have not changed because you have denied yourself. Right? That, 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 that does not change your reality. That, that because, again, the ego, which is the denier, is not real. So the ego can really do nothing. Right? But it, it can appear to do something, but it, it really, in reality, can do nothing. And so... Um, the denial does not affect anything, really. It only affects our understanding of ourself, right? And, and, and if we don't want to know ourself, okay, fine. We don't want to know ourself. Um, Jesus is saying, well, you know, you can only do that for so long, <laughs> right? That will, that will work as long as you don't want to know the truth. And as soon as you do want to know the truth, you will have it. But as long as you don't really want to know the truth, yeah, you're going to have the question and you're going to have the doubts and you're going to be in denial. Um, your denial made no change in what you are, but you have split your mind into what knows and does not know the truth. You are yourself. There is no doubt of this, and yet you doubt it. But you do not ask what part of you can really doubt yourself, which is the ego. It cannot really be a part of you that asks this question, for it asks of one who knows the answer. Were it part of you, then certainty would be impossible. So, if the ego really were part, if the ego is really real, then there's a problem, right? <laughs> but, but, hallelujah that the ego is not real, right? The ego is not really part of us. So, what is happening here is that um, we've split our mind into the Holy Spirit and the ego, right? The ego is the part of our mind that speaks the loudest and is hell-bent on, on keeping the separation going. Um, and it does it through fear and guilt and shame, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The Holy Spirit is that still small voice that says, um, my brother, choose again. You know, it, it, don't listen to... <laughs> you don't have to listen to that other voice. Um, no, I mean, the Holy Spirit doesn't really... I, you know, this is, all, this is all metaphorical, by the way, but... but um, so, um, but you cannot ask what part of you can really doubt yourself. But you do not ask what, what part of you can really doubt yourself. Um, <clears throat> the ego is not really part of us, right? Um, the part of us that doubts ourself is not ourself. Because ourself could never doubt ourself. <laughs> Myself can never, could never doubt myself, right? So, so the ego is not, is not me. And I have to stop thinking that it is, right? Uh, and that's what this whole course is about, is, is to not, is to understand what the ego is and, and simply deny the denial of truth, which is what the ego is, right? The ego is the denial of truth. So what is Jesus is recommending that we do, um, suggesting, highly suggesting that we do, is to deny the denial of truth, to deny th that the ego 
is our, our, our true identity. It's not our true identity. All right, paragraph six. Atonement remedies the strange idea that it is possible to doubt yourself and be unsure of what you really are. Right? So you can't really doubt yourself. In reality, in reality, you can't doubt yourself. If you were in that reality, you would not have any doubt. You would have not any question. This is the depth of madness, yet it is the universal question of the world. So Jesus is, is acknowledging this question, what am I, is the universal question of, of everyone that, that seems to be here, that, that feels that they are really here. That, that becomes the question of what am I? You know, where did this, where is God? Who, who, who started this all? Right? What, what, you know, again, all those existential questions um, are the existential questions of everyone in this, in this world. What does this mean except the world is mad? Why share its madness in the sad belief that what is universal here is true? <clears throat> right? so, so again, everything here is witnessing to, the, to untruth. Everything is here is witnessing to unreality. That is universal. It's a universal um, consensus that everyone is agreeing that this is all real. This is all true. Um, and, and Jesus is saying that just shows that everyone is mad. <laughs> right? And this is very sad. <laughs> to, you know, um, so he says, you know, why share its madness in the sad belief that what is universal here is true? So um, even if everyone does it or everyone believes it does not make it true, right? Well, let's just say if the fact that everyone believes that this world is real does not mean it is real. And, and this is where Jesus comes in to say, yeah, it, it is not real. Um, it seems to be very real. And here's why. And he's giving you, he's laying it out throughout the course. Why, why the ego is not real and why the love of God is our own, only reality. Um, all right, paragraph seven. Nothing the world believes is true. It is a place whose purpose is to be a home where those who claim they do not know themselves can come to question what it is they are. And they will come again until the time atonement is accepted and they learn it is impossible to doubt yourself and not to be aware of what you are. This is a great line. Nothing the world believes is, is true. It is a place whose purpose is to be a home where those who claim they do not know themselves can come to question what it is they are. That's the game, right, of life. It's like you, you denied the truth, you, right? You, 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 you accept, took the, the tiny mad idea sept uh, sorry, the tiny mad idea seriously, which is the, the idea of separation, that, the, that, that, that separation from God can happen, right? You took that seriously. We all took that seriously. And then, sh and then everything shattered into a zillion, trillion um, separate pieces or whatever happened, you know? Um, and the game is you know, that, that we want the game to continue of separation. And so we ask the question, but we're not really sincere about that question, right? Because again, if we, if we wanted the answer, we would have the answer. But we don't want, really want the answer, and that's why we don't really know what we are. It's as simple as that. And that, it, but that's not it's easy to understand, but it is easy to understand if you're honest with yourself about it. Right? If you're honest with yourself, you realize I'm actually, I, I am scared of what this is really saying. And I'm, I'm scared of losing my separate identity, right? Because that's, because I've taken that to be what I am. So that's, that's horrifying actually for many people. Um, and if you present most people with this, um, uh, or a lot of people with this, you know, they, if they really understood what this is getting at, I think people would be would be scared, right? <laughs> and, 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 and so, you know, what what we're really getting at here is you you do not want the truth 
because you're afraid of the truth. And I'm not just saying you, but I'm just saying all of us, all of us, on, on, on one level or another. Paragraph 8, only acceptance can be asked of you for what you are is certain. It is set forever in the holy mind of God and in your own. It is so far beyond all doubt and question that to ask what it must be is all the proof you need to show that you believe the contradiction that you know not what you cannot fail to know. That's a, that's a difficult sentence there, but um, it's just a way of saying that the truth of what we are is beyond question. Right? To even ask the question is to show that we don't know what we are. Is this a question or a statement which denies itself in statement? Okay, so it's, now Jesus is saying this is not even a question, you know, the question, what am I? It's a statement that, um, that, that basically says, um, I don't exist, <laughs> right? Or, or it, it's a statement to say, I am here. Now you tell me why, you know, someone tell me, um, um, how did Jesus put it? He puts it elsewhere. You know, it's a statement that, that, that you are real. You know, what am I? Is to, is to basically say, um, this, this false identity that I've taken to be me is real. Now tell me, now, now tell me, you know, um, what the false identity is, right? So that's, <laughs> Th that's really what the statement is, right? This this false identity is real, and now tell me, you know, how I got here. <laughs> Whereas Jesus is saying that just shows that that's that's a statement that you're making. That's really not a question, even, right? It's not it's not a sincere question because once again, I'll say this again: is if you wanted the answer, you you would there would be no question. The fact that you even ask the question means that on some level you're resisting the answer. You're, de you're denying the answer to the question. You, and you want to know the tr you want to know about the false identity, not the true identity. All right, paragraph nine. We have a mission here. We do not come to reinforce the madness that we once believed in. Let us not forget the goal that we accept it. It is more than just our happiness alone we came to gain. What we accept as what we are proclaims what everyone must be along with us. Fail not your brothers, or you fail yourself. Look lovingly on them, that they may know that they are part of you and you of them. So this is a great, this is a great paragraph here. This is a great statement of to say we have a mission. <laughs> we have, right, we, we're on a mission, mission from God. <laughs> um, and our mission is to remember that we, when we do this work and we remember our true reality, everyone wakes up with us, right? We go, we go home together. How does that work? That works through you, first of all, accepting your mission, um, accepting the atonement principle, and seeing your brother as yourself and seeing all all others as yourself now do do you have to do that perfect perfectly in order to know yourself i think jesus is saying in a way you do <laughs> right but um you will have help along the way um when he says, fail not your brothers, he really means don't judge your brothers. Replace all judgment with love, compassion, understanding, forgiveness. See your brother as yourself. See your brother as the, as the love that you are, that you know yourself to be. Don't hold anything against anyone. Let go of every, every grievance. That's the way, right? That's, that's the way home. And everyone... In that, everyone goes home with you, right? When you wake up, everyone wakes up. When you, when you remember your true self, 
you remember that there is only one true self, right? All, all are part of that one self. Paragraph 10, this, this does atonement teach and demonstrates the oneness of God's son is unassailed by his belief he knows not what he is. Today accept atonement, not to change reality, but merely to accept the truth about yourself and go your way rejoicing in the endless love of God. It is but this that we are asked to do. It is but this that we will do today. So now Jesus is getting into the assignment for the day, the practice for the day, and um, he's asking us to accept, accept the atonement or accept atonement. Sometimes he says, I think he says the atonement, and other times he says atonement um, with a capital A. And we're he not here to change anything. We're, he we're here merely to accept reality as it is. Seek not to change the world. Seek only to change your mind about the world. And changing your mind about the world means accepting, um, accepting that love has never changed, um, that our true reality has never changed. Nothing really has ever changed. It's only our, our ego mind that has, has created a few um, little um, blockages to seeing that. But they're really nothing and they, they, they cannot get, really get in the way unless we let them. Paragraph 11, five minutes in the morning and at night, we will devote to dedicate our minds to our assignment for today. So again, five minutes in the morning, five minutes before bed or in the evening. We start with this review of what our mission is. I will accept atonement for myself for I remain as God created me. I am still as God created me. I am, I am um, created by God. <clears throat> but, but God is not a person. And God, in a sense, does not create like we think of creation. Um, creation for the Course is a word that, that actually is quite different, apparently, from how we usually think of creation. For the Course, the creation of God, or the creations of God, are, um, are really just extensions of God's love. So in that sense, we, we don't have to think in terms of persons. This is a very important issue, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, maybe today. But, um, you know, again, there, there's, Jesus has been saying from early on in the Course that God is not a person. God is not just a bigger human being. God is more of an abstraction which would mean that we are also an more of an abstraction than we are a person with a body, right? We, we think of, when we think of a person, we think of a body and a personality and a form. But the whole course is about, is about transcending form. Uh, so, so in reality, the creation of God, if God is not a person, God is an abstraction, then that's what we are as well. Um, and that's, that's the challenge here, but we'll, we'll get, get into that more as we go on. We have not lost the knowledge that God gave to us when he created us like him. We can remember it for everyone, for in creation are all minds as one. And in our memory is the recall how dear our brothers are to us in truth, how much a part of us is every mind, how faithful they have really been to us, and how our Father's love contains them all. <clears throat> so, all our brothers are right there with us, right? And they're not separate. We are all one in reality. On this side of the veil, in the world of perception, they seem to be other. In reality, they are not. And that's why, again, when, when you do this work and you, and you um, go beyond the world of perception, you're doing that for everyone, not just your, you know, your self, your small self, but you actually are remembering for everyone. <clears throat> Paragraph 12. In thanks for all creation, in the name of its creator and his oneness with all aspects of creation, we repeat our dedication to our cause today each hour as we lay aside all thoughts that would distract us from our holy aim. For several minutes, let your mind be cleared of all the foolish cobwebs 
which the world would weave around the Holy Son of God, and learn the fragile nature of the chains that seem to keep the knowledge of yourself apart from your awareness, as you say, I will accept atonement for myself, for I remain as God created me. So you could say that the ego is like cobwebs, sh shadows, clouds, um, however you put it, um, the ego is, is really very wispy, is very, <laughs> ultimately is nothing whatsoever. Um, and we've taken it to be very real. But if we really, you know, if you, if you poke at it a little bit, it will just, it will just disintegrate. <laughs> it, will, it will just completely fall apart. Uh, and, and, and that's really, you know, um, the nature of reality is that this whole um, seeming illusion um, is really, when you really look at it, it, is, it has no substance. Um, it's really um, more like a, a, a great dream. But it seems very real, you know, when you're in it and, 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 and the ego, um, and, and you're very much aligned with the ego, um, and you're much, very much aligned with the way of this world, yeah, it seems very real. It all seems very real, right? Um, all right. Well, <laughs> a lot more to say about this, but um, that's a long video for 12 paragraphs. But uh, all right. Lesson 140 is next. Only salvation can be said to cure. We'll see you there very soon. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and I always love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going home. <laughs> All right, see you soon.